All right, two crazy things that I found doing family history. One a lot more crazy than than the, the previous one. I'm always fascinated by the stories behind our family names. I just want to hear the story. Especially when you go back a bit and you don't have any pictures based on the documents, the information that we can find and and and, and try to put together a, a complete picture there. But I'm always interested in the story. I was tracing a McDonald line. So we're going to go here to my ancestry page. And it turned out it's uh, Catherine E. McDonald, and she is my great great, well, let's say my second great great grandfather's niece. And this is, and, and they had come in from Andaganish, Nova Scotia, and they settled in Knox County, particularly in Thomaston, Maine. So I'm following this. And my thing is, I like to find living relatives. And I was able to do that. I was able to get and still have contact today with re living relatives relatives in Tomston, Maine. So the McDonald's came in in the mid 1850s and they and they and great and there are still family there today, which is really cool. So here I'm following this line. And so we have Catherine E. McDonald marries a James Donahue. Yeah, because McDonald just wasn't a common enough Irish name. No, 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 no. We got to get Donahue. And it does, and I don't know for sure, but it does look like the Donahue line was actually in Springfield. As a, So I have this. Now, I, again, I don't know if this is going to be it, but Springfield is like the Irish capital of the Northeast. I mean, you're going to have a lot of Irish in Springfield, Massachusetts. But again, I don't know yet. I just know that Donahue, really popular, probably more popular it's probably even more common than McDonald. That's my curse there. I have some of the most common surnames. Rogers. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's going to make... <laughs> that really throws a monkey wrench into your family history when you have such a common name. And Catherine, does every single Irish girl need to be named Catherine or Mary Catherine? Do we have Mary? We've got our share there. So I was doing research here and following this. And, and, and before I get to the really crazy one... This is one of the things that, that, that got me. So I'm trying to follow the, the information for uh, James Donahue's line. And I kept on getting this. See, it just kept on coming down to a Florence Donahue, okay? So immediately, of course, m you know, my sexism kicks in. I'm thinking, this is not right. Mary Madden here is the wife? So now I have James Donahue. His wife is Catherine McDonald, and we have Belle Donahue Cole, which I know for I know for certain is the daughter that that I'll get to next. So this is what kind of threw me. Florence Donahue, uh, ninety years old, died September uh, nineteen thirteen in in uh, Knox County, Maine. It, it just I I could I, I so I look I got, it's got to be a mistake. So I kept on doing research, and, and then I, I decided I had to do a Google search. This is not making any sense. Men are just not named Florence. Well, it turns out I couldn't have been more wrong. Right, she's a guy! So if you go to Wikipedia, Florence is a given name, generally is for women. It's a, uh, so it, like it says, Florence is a feminine English given name. All right, Florence was in olden times, ye olden times, also used as a translation of the Latin version Florentius and may be used in this context as a male given name. So this was really a surprise to me. So I read through this and this is the part that I want to talk about here. Florence itself, this is the history of this is what I love. You know, I really love the history aspect of this. Florence itself has been used for boys. The Latin is Florentius, particularly in Ireland where it is used as an anglicization of Irish Finian. And, I'm not even going to attempt that. That's what was interesting here is that Florence, of course, even though he died, he, uh, he's buried in Thomaston, he actually is from Ireland. So if we go through the census records uh, here, we can see we have Florence Donahue, and he is born in Ireland. So it's no, it's no, Donahue, Irish, not a big surprise there. So there it made sense because the Irish seem to have a particular thing for using feminine names that they that they they uh, make masculine because one of the probably the most famous one who is actually famous for being a real tough guy is Marion Morrison who of course is John Wayne but still 
life can't be easy for a boy named Florence. So while we may think that life may, <laughs> may not be easy for a boy named Florence, uh, it turns out he was uh, at least as tough as John Wayne was portrayed because the guy was a blacksmith. So I would imagine being a blacksmith, nobody was making fun of this guy because his name was Florence. I mean, uh, maybe not more than one time anyway. This wasn't enough. Wasn't yeah, so this this is a whole big thing. I, I, now I know, and now you know, the Irish were fond of naming their their little boys Marion and also Florence. Of course, there's Carol O'Connor, who was of course Archie Bunker. Hey there, Jefferson. That ain't very nice talking that way to your little mammy here. <laughs> so you wouldn't think it would be too easy for a boy named Carol. But yeah, yeah, Florence uh, Donahue, blacksmith, tough guy. All right, so getting back to what I was actually researching, they, his daughter is Annabelle Donahue, and she was born in 1883 in Rockland, Knox County, Maine, and she married Adam Elias Cole, who actually turned out, I'm not going to go into much detail here, who actually um, turned out to be a doctor, an orthopedic doctor. It was really cool to get a picture of him in medical school. But you can see here, this is what got me. James Donahue, her father, died on the 2nd of March, 1914. And I have a death record that the daughter died the same, just a few weeks later, in 1914. And so what's crazy about this is the death certificate back in, in that time in Maine, not too detailed, but they were detailed enough to just be like, whoa. So like I said, this is the actual death record. Her name was actually Annabelle Donahue a Cole. Place of death is Rockland, the date of death, and she was only 31 years old. She was, uh, the father is James Donahue. Uh, the maiden name of the mother is uh, Mary McDonald. Uh, the birthplace of father, which is really cool to have. To have. The occupation of the father, he was commissioner of uh, sea and shore fisheries. Apparently, he was, he was a very successful and, very, and, and had a lot of money. But this is what really blew my mind and what was so crazy. Because I didn't even know this was actually a thing until I, I looked at this death record. So as you can see here, it's very clear. Heart failure from exhaustion grief at death of father i'm like holy crap you can actually die of a broken heart and so i looked it up so here at mayoclinic.org they're talking about the broken heart syndrome and and it says rarely broken heart syndrome can cause death however most people who have broken heart syndrome quickly recover and don't have long lasting effects here unfortunately it did result in death and so i actually have the documents for when she was working on her father's uh, probate. And I, I, I don't remember exactly, but that may have been what led me to this. And, and to see that it happened so, I, I was a couple of weeks. So it was, it was, they both died three weeks apart uh, from each other. It's just uh, horrific. And one last note about this particular story. There is a child that she did give birth uh, uh, prior to this, uh, well, duh, but it, I think it was 1913, the year that they were, a year after they were married, they were married in 1912. And uh, there is a child. I have not been able to get any information. He left to go to medical school a few years after that. He went back to Massachusetts, where his family is from. And even though I know when he died, I know he remarried. I've never been able to find any information on the child, which I figured the child was probably raised by the family. The, the, the mother's family was probably raised by the Donahues or the McDonald's. I just have not been able to find any record of that. That is something that hopefully in the next few weeks I will be able to get. But these are just two examples of some of the amazing and just crazy things that you are going to be able to see when you're doing family research. I would prefer not to see something like this. It's sort of like when you see that you have a bride. I found somebody's grandmother or great-grandmother, and I, I, and I was able to confirm she was like 11 when she was born, and, and it would even show it on a, I'll have to do a separate video about that, but there, she's on a U.S. census. She's 20 years old with a nine-year-old son. No! No! And I already previously did a video where I found a Randazzo here in Phoenix that passed away who did have a child bride. So, so I'll have that in the description. If you have not seen that, definitely check it out uh, because there's another aspect to that that is even one of the craziest ones that I've ever gotten off of the death certificate. So definitely check that out. Hey, I'm Mark. This is Epic Genealogy. Thanks for watching. And if you liked the video, definitely hit a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't.